going to start right now. So first of all, uh, thank you everyone for being here with us or if you watch the replay uh, later in YouTube. Uh, well, it's a pleasure to finish the webinar series uh, with Maria Povela, Investment uh, Associate at Inverray. Uh, as many as as you know, as many of you know, uh, this is the fourth chapter talking about venture capital in healthcare. The goal of this webinar series uh, is to share knowledge about venture capital in healthcare. As many of you know, uh, venture capital is a closed sector and it's difficult to to play the venture capital game and even more difficult. Uh, in the healthcare ecosystem. So our way, our our goal is to 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 share this knowledge uh, through all of you. Well, the uh, the webinar series has been uh, co-hosted with the EIT Health Alumni Network. Uh, first of all, uh, again, uh, many thanks to 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 all the people who has helped us helped us in all the chapters. Uh, Joan, Krishna, Robin, Miriam, and Bea, and all of the members of the community who has helped us. Well, the EIT Health Alumni Network is a multidisciplinary community of innovators building the future of healthcare by alumni for alumni. Uh, the EIT Health Alumni Network has grown to a community of 2,000 members by tailoring our their programs to the local needs of their members. And because innovation lives beyond health, so does our network. At the end of the session, uh, we are going to share with you a survey in order to, to get uh, your opinion about this, this talk, okay? And now we are talking about the specific te team. Well, uh, the three of us are members of the EIT Health Alumni Network. And well, uh, Pedro is uh, biochemistry by, by degree, and he has a PhD in biomedicine. Pedro is going to be the one who, who will lead the conversation with Maria uh, through this webinar. Uh, he's postgrad in health, health innovation by Biocat, and he also has experience founding a healthcare startup. And nowadays, uh, he works in Edibel. Adri, Adria, uh, is pharmacist by the way. Uh, he has a master in, in management and he has experience in the healthcare, uh, entrepreneurship and venture capital industry. Uh, and last but not least, uh, I am Gonzalo. I'm engineer, in, engineer by the way. And well, I help uh, healthcare and social impact companies to transform their, their ideas into digital products through technology. Uh, as you know, the, the, the goal of the webinar, I told you, but now the topic of today is gonna be, uh, is venture capital financing right for my startup? And Maria Poveda, through her experience, is gonna share with us the answer of, two topics or two questions. What financing do I need for my startup? And how to identify a venture capital investable company in the current ecosystem? Let me finish with the introduction of Maria Poveda. And I'm gonna read it because I don't want to forget any detail. And uh, Maria, his investment associate at InverReady since 2018. She's in charge of the biotech deal flow management and analysis of the new companies as well as monitoring the portfolio companies. Inver Ready is latest life, life science fund, has raised uh, 30 million uh, euros. They invest in drug development companies that have in vivo efficacy, proof of concept, and initial uh, toxicology. They also invest in enabling technologies as bioprocessing and digital health and in consumer health. Uh, Maria holds a degree in biotechnology, 
uh, she's uh, MCC in biomedicine and MCC in management and pharmaceutical and biotechnological companies. So thank you very much, Maria, for joining us. Now the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Gonzalo. Uh, and well, uh, we always do not in an interview, uh, if not um, more like a conversation before go directly to the, your presentation. So I would like to ask you, for example, after this presentation about your professional career that Gonzalo tell us, why you decide to break into the BC world? Well, How first, was that process for you? Yeah, well, first of all, I want to thank all, all of you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to, to be sharing all this conversation with all of you and all the audience here today. Uh, well, as Gonzalo explained, I'm, I studied biotechnology and this degree, we, we, we don't only study uh, science basics, but on, on, on always the, the application of this science. And that was why I decided to move to the business because I saw that uh, you can learn a lot in the laboratory, but you will never see that application in patients. And that, that was my reason to move to the business side. And why the venture capital business? Well, is, um, uh, I felt that I was like a serial it's not the same, of course, but uh, you can feel like a serial entrepreneur because yeah, you can learn from uh, helping a lot of, a lot of entre entrepreneurs in different kind of uh, startups, different kind of technologies. Uh, you can see all the evolution of the company. So that's why I decided to move to the venture capital to help this um investigations to reach their application to reach the patients and uh, yeah and to see to learn as much as possible from all the ecosystem in biotech nice yes i also study science that and, and jump into the company world but um, go more in, in detail for for something that is curious because the venture capital what was your, your prior experience before the ready? Uh, yeah, well, I started in several laboratories, first in Elche, it's a small town in, in Spain. And then I moved to, to Madrid to another, well, to a bigger laboratory. And then, uh, I just, as I explained, I decided to move to the business, uh, to the business side. And I started in other fund, uh, there is Caixa Capital Risk. I, st I started as an intern and there I learned how to analyze companies, uh, how important is the network, uh, how dynamic is this, uh, let's say market or yeah, work. But I, I wouldn't say work because I really enjoy, enjoy it. Um, and then, yeah, I, I moved to the entrepreneur side to know who were their, their main questions, their main preoccupations uh, about uh, funding a or starting a company, a startup. And then again, I moved to the, uh, yeah, to the venture capital side uh, to grow my, my experience in venture capital, in financing, which is also a very interesting, uh, yeah, uh, work and, and market and everything. Yeah. Really powerful journey. And what, one question that you, you were in Kaisa Capital Risk and now in Iberridi, I think uh, Kaisa Capital, I, I don't know if it's healthcare specific or is a general one, but what is the difference in raising money from a BC found focus on healthcare? And receiving uh, money from general or agnostic BC funds. Yeah, well, in Caixa Capital Risk, there are also different verticals. Uh, the thing is that they get the money from the bank, so they don't have to raise funds. They well, they, they have the funds in their in their company. The difference is that in Beredi is like uh, 
it's a traditional venture capital. So we have to raise fund for, you know, we, we raise a fund for five years. So we invest during five years. So each five years we have to raise funds for from private investors, uh, government. So it's like, yeah, you have to uh, explain to these investors uh, which is your strategy, uh, uh, why you select this field of companies, that stage, that size ticket. So yeah, it's a more traditional venture capital since uh, Caixa is, you know, it's one of the biggest bank of Spain. So they have no problems on raising this money. And this, it's uh, in front of a VC is what startup want <laughs> to know more how to sell and, and yeah and jump into the VC. And well, uh, another question is because nowadays it's not only one VC in Europe or in Spain. In Spain, in, Bar in Barcelona, there are a lot of uh, not so much but a few several yeah. venture capital. Why do you think the number of investment? Healthcare company has increased nowadays compared to a, a five years ago. Why is the number of startups and, and the VC have rise so quickly? Well, I think that people have seen during this last, last five, 10 years how important is this, uh, this field, the bio biomedical or biotechnological field. Uh, they have seen the returns because uh, there are some funds that uh, fin finalized the investments and they gave returns to the investors. So they are, I think that the problem in biomedical field is that uh, there are not, um, not every investor is capable to understand uh, or they, they don't have like the background to understand all the science and that's, the main preoccupation that they have. And when they see that it's working, uh, it, there are some returns and interesting returns, how the pharmaceutical companies work. It's like a kind of, they feel more confident with, the, with this, with science. And of course, uh, uh, how, how not mention uh, COVID, uh, help it to to increase this market to evident to make evidence and how, how important is this uh, this market that is not cyclical that it's always important that it, there is a lot of money moving uh, around this type of companies and uh, yeah yeah i think it's about confidence in science and this type of companies so investors are more uh, take more risk uh, investing in, in this type of companies, in biotechnological companies. I agree with you, Maria. And I think Europe, the European Union, know that, the, the importance of the healthcare company and they are putting a lot of facilities, money, and to, to, to grow this sector for both parts. Okay, I am sure that the audience have a lot of questions not only for VC, but also for, for your professional career, or I don't know if they are curious about this topic. So please uh, write your question in the Q&A section. And now we, we are going to, to jump to the main part of the webinar, the, well, the, the topic lecture. That's if you are doing and creating a startup and you ask, uh, yourself, if your startup, uh, which kind of financing is right for you, if it's VC or not. Now Maria is going to develop and and and, and well and explain us all of this topic. Maria, the screen okay. is yours. Okay, thank you. Just let me know if you see the presentation and if it is full screen. Uh, yeah, can you see it? Yes, I'm full screen. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, first of all, uh, well, I wanted to explain which uh, which type of financing you can 
uh, you can get to your company depending on the on the stage, depending on your type of, co of company, because we usually talk about biotech companies as uh, drug development companies, but uh, for sure, there are uh, other types of companies. Well, there are medtech companies, e-health, that is growing a lot uh, after COVID, mainly. And uh, yeah, there, there are, they are different types of companies and they can, as you will see, they can um, get funds from different types of investors. So uh, I'm sorry, but yeah, the, the main, um, uh, to, to be in context, uh, I, I chose like a traditional biotech company, but here uh, you can be creative and think also in a medtech or a health company and there are different stages. So uh, depending on the stage where your company is, you can ask for different private capital. I will not say venture capital, but private capital. So in the more seed stages, when you are uh, creating the company, when you are developing the proof of concepts that will uh, move yourself to your to the, to to be VC ready, you can ask for money for this uh, private capital to your friends, uh, friends and family, which are your uh, more um, close people. Uh, there are also other kind of investors such as business angels or family offices. Uh, business angels usually are professionals on the, in the field that they have um, they have sell well they they, they had uh, success in their companies and they have sell their company so they have money and they are investing and helping our entrepreneurs with their uh, experience so they usually start investing in this um, earlier stages uh, as well in family offices there are uh, for sure different uh, family offices funds so you can find them investing in all uh, the stages from earlier to later stages but they usually invest in earlier stages so here you, for sure, you can uh, find some uh, investors that uh, use convertible loans. So they are uh, loan, soft loans that will be converted when uh, when you close a capital raise. So uh, uh, yeah, for sure, uh, uh, capital increase with a BC, a bigger one. When you reach an important point, uh, let's say a proof of concept, uh, to start for clinical studies, you can look for Series A here. Uh, <clears throat> mainly, you can choose for some venture capital, but there are also uh, other ways to get private funding, such as crowdfunding. As I said before, family offices will also invest in these stages. Uh, if you are more met medtech or e-health company, you can look for other industrial partners that also invest in, in companies, not only VCs, but also industrial partners. Or uh, nowadays, there, are, there is an increasing corporate venture capital that comes from the big pharma. So you can, you can have a look and investigate more uh, about all the opportunities you have to fund your company and finally uh, for sure uh, when a private uh, when you when you get private capital let's say venture capital that it's the main private capital you, you will find they invest to the invest and they will be looking for a license for an MA that is the natural way of a, of a company uh, to finally develop their their technology. When you arrive at a very important milestone, let's say a phase two in patients uh, for a drug, then you look for a license or, or, or an acquisition from a, a big pharma. There are also of other ways of funding, such as going to the public market, where it's a very dynamic pri private uh, ma public market, sorry, yeah. a very dynamic market where you can raise more money and fund your later developments. 
So as, as you see, depending on the stage your company is, you can look for different type of investors. And that's very important because you have a lot of variety or of, of funding. Uh, yeah, uh, following this, this explanation, you can see that there are different uh, kind of um, funds that you can get to your, to your company. Uh, not only VC, but also grants that it's a non-dilutive financing that usually comes from your government. Uh, for sure, we can say the EIC grants from the European Union. Uh, public market is also a good way to, to get funding in a later stages. And all of them are growing, as I said, as I said, um, it's a, a, yeah, it's a market that is, is, is growing. Uh, we are having more evidence that it's an important market. It's a big market. Um, uh, well, funds each year are bigger and there are more, more, more funding for your companies. So yes, the, the, my idea of this graph was on just to illustrate that this is uh, a fact and the, the funding is growing all along the year. Uh, as I said before, it's not only by your stage of development, but also the type of company you, you own. Um, you, uh, th th this is also an illustrative graph. Uh, it's from, I think it's from uh, 2018. So, so maybe it's not updated, but just to illustrate that depending on, on the companies, you can find uh, different type of investors that will, uh, that will match with your company more uh, than others. In this case, biopharma company are mostly funded by venture capital. But if your company is a service company, for example, you can see that uh, you can get funds from uh, venture capital, business angels, private debt, and other entrepreneurs. That's um, one of the main reasons of, of this fact is that when you are developing a medtech technologies or service companies, it's easier to understand to other investors that sometimes are not so professionals in the biotechnological companies. So they take more risk to invest in these, um, in these uh, actives. And not also but uh, about this, but also because um, drugs are more risky than a medtech company because uh, you need more time to develop and to reach the market than a medtech or e-health company needs. So that's why uh, other investors take more risk in, uh, in medtech and service instead of biopharma. For sure, it's um, also, uh, uh, well, the reason is that uh, biopharma needs more, more money to develop their drugs. And uh, for sure, the best way of financing is VC in this case. Um, uh, when you decided that you want to go to a VC, you have also to, to know which VC you have to, to go for, because um, there are a lot of strategies. Uh, there are, yeah, I will, I will pass the, 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 the slide. Here you can see the VC in Biopharma in, Gadal, in, in Spain from a video report. <clears throat> And it's also an illustrative graph where you can see that uh, that the uh, investment is growing, but also uh, each fund is growing. For example, in Inverready, we started with a 10 million fund. We have right now at 30 million funds. And depending on this uh, first, second, or third generation fund, uh, the strategy can change between uh, different VCs, the strategy is different. We look for different technologies than other VCs. Uh, we have different size tickets. So you have to, uh, you need to have all these uh, particularities in mind. So 
you have to go for the VCs that uh, really match with your technology, with the time of uh, uh, the, the round investment round you are looking for, uh, the stage you are, etc. So here I recopilate uh, the most important points that you have to know about every VC before you ask for them for a first meeting, for example. So for, for example, uh, you have to see if this BC is for all kind of life sciences technology or they are only focused on e-health. And here I'm uh, using Inveready as an example. In our case, we look for different kinds of technologies in life sciences. So uh, I can guess that the, the, the most of, of you can, can send us a deck and we will have a, a meeting or we will consider uh, your decks as an opportunity. But for example, uh, having an being creative thing, just um, if we were a VC that only invest in e-health, it makes no sense that a biopharmaceutical company sends us a deck because uh, it's not our sweet spot. So you have to uh, have this in mind. For sure, the stage of the development we, we talked before. In our case, uh, you can see here, we look for, a, for companies that are development drug, uh, drugs, that they have a POC, a proof of concept in a, a, a scientific validated animal model. So if you are earlier this stage, yeah, for sure you can have a conversation with us, but you will not be our sweet spot to invest. Um, there are other, other, other BCs that are more late stage that they invest in, let's say in phase one, phase two clinical studies. So it has no sense that uh, you approach every kind of BCs uh, without having in mind their, their strategy. Other consideration will be their geographical focus. Uh, for example, we invest all, uh, all well, uh, around uh, Europe, but mainly in Spain. So if you are a Spanish company, you will have, uh, you will be more suitable for from our investment. But uh, I don't know, if you are looking for a BC that invests only in USA and you are from Germany, it has, sometimes has no sense that you send the BC. So uh, yeah, you should keep in mind all these points to, to approach BC for sure. Another important point is the portfolio. Um, when you go to a portfolio of a BC, you have to keep in mind if you are an anti-cancer, anti-tumor drug development company and they have the 50% of the portfolio in, in cancer, maybe they are they are looking for other disease, other uh, yeah, therapies for other diseases. So, or if they only invest in rare disease, um, so, and you are developing a red disease, then let's send your, your deck to this DC. For sure, the investment size, it doesn't mean that we only invest in 2 million size round, but that our maximum ticket is 2 million. So, if, uh, maybe if you are raising a 50 million round, a uh, small VC will not invest or, or yeah, but it's a follower. So you will need a lead investor. So uh, this is another important point that you have to have in mind uh, that you will have to look uh, more VCs to complete your, your, your run for sure. Uh, in terms of uh, if your project is VC uh, investable, uh, you have to keep in mind um, your your own project. Your if you have a, in our case, if you have a solid in vivo proof of concept, a unique technology, and IP protection is always very important in life sciences projects. <clears throat> you need a very clear development plan, so you can, <clears throat> sorry, so you have very clear the, the regulatory strategy that you are going to follow to reach the, the exit. Uh, you need a team that uh, is complementary and it's very important to have a CEO that is 100% per 
for the project and you uh, have to be clear of which is your need of financing. So you have to read that VCs that will fund uh, completely your round co-investing. Uh, it's the more use, usually way, but you have to, to, to think which VCs I'm going to approach and is my project uh, matching that, that strategy of, of the VCs. As I said before, it's not only we don't only invest in, in drug development companies. We also invest in uh, enabling companies. And here you can see some examples. CDMOs is one of our street spots. For sure, IBDs and medtech companies, digital, the, uh, digital tech, and OTC. So in this case, for example, we look for companies that generate profit. So we can meet, uh, we can have a meeting with uh, companies that are developing their uh, diagnostic uh, product. So we can help them to, to know uh, uh, in which moment we, we will uh, invest, but um, it's more probable that we will not invest in that stage, in that early stage. And as I said before, it's not only for it's not only venture capital financing, but you can ask for other type of financing. In this case, non-dilutive financing. You can look in in your country or in Europe for grants such as EIC Innovation. Here, the the graph down or well, the table down. It's uh, the the millions investing. Uh, from the government in Spain, it's 48 million in 2020. Uh, <clears throat> so grants, as you know, it's uh, well, uh, money that you get and you don't have to, to, to refund. And it doesn't take participation from your company, so it's not dilutive. And, and loans, it's also uh, another product that the uh, banks, other investors, the government uh, through Europe and through uh, your countries, uh, regional loans uh, that you can get. Usually they are soft loans, so they have a very low interest. Uh, they have, and you don't have to um, get back that money uh, since some uh, some years. So you will be relaxed developing your, your technology and then to uh, finance that loan. Another type of private, uh, uh, yeah, private financing is crowdfunding. That it's they are usually online platform that ask for uh, uh, minority investors to to invest in a company. So uh, this is a good idea in early stages companies to get the money. Um, uh, arrive uh, that milestone that you need to reach, for example, a POC or proof of concept, or to reach the market and then look for a, a venture capital. Uh, this is a very good um, way of, of getting money. <clears throat> in fact, in Spain, the last two years has increased a lot this, this, uh, this financing in biotech companies. And finally, uh, if you are a late stage company and you need more financing, you can go for public markets. Uh, there is a very dynamic market and you, uh, well, here in <clears throat> biotech fields, you can see that uh, the main countries are in the same, uh, yeah, they, they, they have listed, a similar number of companies and they have raised a similar amount of money, let's say uh, three outflows in, in Finland, Ireland, Belgium and Austria, and they have raised all, more or less uh, 200 million uh, uh, each year. Uh, so it's another way to, to get financing with, when you are a later stage. So uh, just to, to recap, uh, it's very important for you to know that you have uh, different, uh, you can reach different investors, private investors, uh, depending on your states of your type of company. You have to be very aware of this, 
investment strategy that the VCs or other investors have to reach them. And uh, for sure, you can ask for alternative financing than usually. They are non-dilutive, and that helps you to, to have an important part of, of your company. And yeah, uh, this was everything I wanted to share with you. If you have some questions, I'm very pleased to, to, to give you the, the answers. I'm going to stop sharing to see my colleagues. In this in, in this. Thank, thank you very much, Maria. Thank you for all that insights, really, and recommendation tips, and and to to the, to to show us the financing right for each stage of our startup. No, how how do to to identify the the VC investor company for us? Because for me, the biggest insight that uh, I will I would like to take with me is that they never invest in businesses that you cannot understand. So you should go to the VC, the core VC that understand you. If you are a healthcare company, go to the life in the radio or similar with topics life science, right? This is important. Yeah, let, okay. let me add, Pedro, it's not only that they understand you, but they can also help you if they understand the business. So let's say smart money, but it's <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they are not, uh, yeah, they are intelligent for sure. Okay, now um, collecting all the question is the turn to Adria. Adri, with you, uh, ask you well, the question for the public and if not, we have some question also. Uh, Adri, please. Pedro and Maria for your, for your speech, your lecture, super interesting. Um, we have a, a question from Ignacio. Ignacio, um, he asked, uh, "What specific data do you look for when reviewing reviewing preclinical data?" Maria, if you have, uh... Uh, yes. Well, uh, well, we invest previous to the preclinical regulatory preclinical stages, so we look for some efficacy data in animals. And if you have some toxicity, so usually we can see if the, the animals uh, lose some weight. And sometimes we can see if EHERG channels are affected or not. But mainly what, do, what we want to see if your drug is uh, it's, uh, having some effect in the animals uh, in, in terms of efficacy. Okay, and what about the uh, services or digital health? Uh, uh, is very different uh, uh, from biotech. Uh, what are your insights? Uh, yeah, for sure, it's, they are different. They need different size amount of money to develop their their product. Uh, for example, in our case, we invest when they are in the market. Mm -hmm. I think it's. Let me say it's easier. It's not easier. It's different. Uh, but yeah, there is not. You, you don't have to develop through ten years such as uh, drugs. Uh, you can, uh, let's say, to perform a small uh, clinical trial and then to reach the market with this clinic, uh, clinical trial. So uh, for sure, they are different. They need different kind of investors. Uh, sometimes more round so I think that it's easier for them to 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 get money because as Pedro, Pedro explained before um, uh, there are more people that understand softwares or other kind of company let's say hardware because they they see these active tangible so that's why there are different kind of investors uh, um, depending on your type of, of product. I don't know if I, I'm answering the, the, the question. If I'm not, uh, let's uh, yeah, insist. Yes, yes you do. <laughs> um, well, I think that the, for this moment, it, did, it was the only question, but um, I encourage uh, all the uh, people that are watching this that uh, make questions, now it's your time. 
so don't don't hesitate don't be shy um and pedro and gonzalo if you have any question or you want to to share some insights go on yeah let, let me to to ask another question maria mm -hmm. that the uh, well based on your experience and for example in in kaisa again in kaisa capital risk or in ready how uh, what is your bigger challenge nowadays for a VC? The bigger challenge? Well, I think that uh, one of the things nowadays is that we have more competition. Uh, there are more newer funds that, it, that are being uh, investing in biotech companies. So we, uh, one of the challenges to know every biotech company that is in Spain and Europe, so we can do the best investment. One, this is one of the most important challenges uh, from BC. For sure, the other is to, to be successful raising money. Uh, we cannot invest in, in companies without money, so <laughs> that's a very important point. And for sure, there are uh, competition, uh, asking in private investors to with different strategies. So you have to to know very and um, to know very well and explain very well why uh, you are following one strategy and not the other. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Gonzalo raised his hand. Yeah, because I wanted to ask a question, but let's first ask the question from Sex Perez. Is is there a minimum and maximum amount investment from your VC for the seed round? Yeah, well, we invest in Series E uh, rounds. Uh, we don't do like different uh, different series. We invest in a in a unique. Uh, investment round so my minimum is uh, 0.5 million and the maximum is 2 million per company for sure we divide this investment in in tranches but uh, yeah we we compromise all so the money uh, since the since uh, well since we we decide to invest it is change off well, for sure, we invest in exchange of uh, participations. We we get some part of the company, and then uh, so so our strategy is to invest, get a part of the from the company, and when the company will be sold or will list it, uh, we get uh, some money in return, and hopefully we get some um, yeah some return in a in a. Well, gaining money, of course. I have a question, Maria. Yeah. Um, when analyzing a company, um, what method do you do you use for valuation? Um, market uh, comparison valuation or VC uh, method? Or what? Or there are others as well, but uh, what yeah. do you Depending on the type of company, we use one of the other, but I think um, one of the most important valuation model is the comparable model. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So, ah, okay. I have, uh, we have uh, another question from Van Guyen. Sorry if I don't, <laughs> didn't, didn't say correctly. Uh, he or she, well, <laughs> this person says, <laughs> what is your advice for people who are looking for a career in VC? Pros and cons of working in a VC? Thank you. Thank you for your question. Okay. Um, well, my advice is that you have to be always updated about the, the, the science advance. Uh, yeah, to be updated about science, about uh, new drugs. And I would say that it's important also to know something about business. So what I did is to study a business master for in pharmaceutical companies. So you will be like a hybrid 
person with a background in science and so also, also in business. So that's very important in this in this field. Um, pros and cons. Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, well, I would say that you can see a lot of types of, of, of companies. Uh, for sure, you know, uh, you know, small things about a lot of markets. So you are not a specialist in any indication in any drug, but you can have inputs from all type of technologies and market and you can be updated about all these all, all, yeah from all the biotechnological um yeah uh, ha, ha, where, where is the, the world going you can be updated about it and it's important that you are updated and you you are learning constantly so that's I would say that's a pros, at least for me, that I really like it. Pedro? Yeah, I have a question um, waiting for, for another uh, from the public. Um, yeah, but nowadays, well, the number of PC are growing here in, in Europe, I, uh, well, uh, a lot of VC or on, only in Spain, there are, no sé, five, ten, I don't know exactly the number, but the, the difficulty, so the problem when you are a, a early stage startup and you go and, and ask for money to one and they refuse you. And so I think it's quite difficult to, to, to break and go and be selected for, for a VC. But imagine the other side, in, in a world with hundreds of VC, when all the VC are willing to invest in your startup. So how to select? I think there is a transparency in what is the, the share that they want, how many hours they are will help you, um, well, the, the money, the time to, to, to refund the, the money. So all that to select from 10 different VC, to select yeah. the one that you would like. Um, well, uh, one of the things that you can do is to, to do some search and look for the background of this VC. If they had some successful exit, so that, that gives you an idea if the VC will help you and know something about selling companies. That one point. Another point is, uh, and I really like it, when entrepreneurs ask you, ask the VC, uh, which is your, uh, how you work with a company, if you are very hands-on, if you are not. And uh, yeah, for sure, you should be transparent because market knows you, uh, you have invested in several companies and you can talk with my portfolio companies as I ask them uh, how we work. So it has no sense that the VC lies you because you have other ways to know the truth. So yeah, a uh, lot of entrepreneurs ask us uh, these things when, when we, in fact, when we say not for the investment, they also ask, uh, the reasons so they can grow uh, or they can know if uh, we will be interested in a future or they have to 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 pivot to other disease or market and yeah you just let's ask uh, to other stakeholders in this market not only VCs other entrepreneurs uh, and I think one of the best thing of this field is that people is very helpful. So ask, uh, you you don't lose anything uh, when you're asking. We will do. <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, another question from Chesk Perez. He's uh, asking computer vision using AI is in your scope of investments? Uh, yeah, I, I say I'd say that 
digital health. Uh, when when you have the product in the market, we can we can look at it uh, as uh, an investment opportunity. Sure. Great. So I englobe it in e health. I don't know. <laughs> it's a very big market here. And um, I think I'm going to be the the one with the latest question and uh, because many of you have talked about the smart money and you have uh, a lot of years of experience working on venture capital if you could be in the other side of the table and you could uh, run a startup looking for an, for an investment mm -hmm. what could you consider uh, a smart money for your company Okay, for example, I would say that a VC that has experience developing a technology similar at yours. For example, we are very specialists in chemical drugs. So uh, as I said, we cannot lie. You can see our portfolio and we are not experts in advanced therapeutics, for example, at least for now. Um, so, uh, you can look for VCs that have invested for years in uh, advanced therapeutics, genetic therapeutics, and that's a smart money. They, they are people that know how to develop, to, they know uh, who people you have to ask, uh, specialists in regulatory uh, aspects in this field. Uh, you can see if they had uh, some exit or with uh, BC you are co-investing. So it's, uh, of course, it's also a network thing. Uh, so you, you can think in different things. If you are a uh, late states, you can think in exit. If we had some exits in medtech, in, in, no, in oncology, uh, that's more money. If you need something, someone helping you in the regulatory field, you can see the portfolio they had. Um, yeah, depending on your weakness or the, the thing that you need more help uh, in your project. And that's a very good question, Hello. <laughs> Thank you for answering. You're welcome. So, I guess that uh, we are uh, ending this uh, session. Um, if thanks a lot, Cheska is is saying, yeah, Krishna is uh, sharing also on the chat um, a survey from this uh, session. Uh, we would really appreciate your 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 thoughts, your your feedback, so that we can get better every time. And um, yeah, thank you, Maria, for, for your time, for, for sharing your knowledge, your experience. Uh, it's a pleasure to, to have you here with us. And all the participants that uh, are here, thank you for, for your time, for, for listening to us and to learn. That's, we do it for, for you, so thank you for, for that. Um, and I, I leave the, the floor to Gonzalo and Pedro if you, if you want to say some words. Uh, thank you so much. I just want to, to thank Maria and all the people from the AT Health alumni who has helped us through the way. And it's been a pleasure doing this with you, Pedro and Adri. And for the audience here they, in the chat, they have the playlist for all with all the chapter of the webinar series in YouTube. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys. It was a pleasure to be here. Hope I help you uh, and the presentation was, was useful for your community. It was, yes. Sure, sure. All of us learned today and during this 